What's poppin' T-Squad? It's your girl Keisha and I'm here with tonight's All Tea All Shade Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 10 Episode 13 Review. So we start off tonight with the girls arriving in Barcelona. Cynthia passes out a 50 cent bucket challenge to everyone, which seems like it was fun. That's a cute, fun idea for all the girls to do. One of the challenges is to become someone else for the day. And Nene immediately chooses Candy and does a spot on impersonation of Candy. Because, you know, Candy's face is always tuned up. She always dry. She always looking at somebody like they crazy, like they stupid. So it was like perfect. So Shamia asks where Kenya and Kim is. And Nene says Kim didn't come because she couldn't bring her husband. Nene says Kim is the only person I know who has had cancer, thyroids, blood clots, a stroke, open heart surgery, and is still out here being negative. If you have had that much happen to you, you should be grateful to God that he let you live through every disease in America. She needs to have an electric stroller walking her around. <laughs> that shit was funny because it was the God's honest truth. This is the most complainingest woman I have ever seen in my fucking life. By the way, if the audio fucks up, I apologize in advance. So, Nene in her confessional says the bionic Barbie has had every illness in the world and then try to act like my life is so happy it's so great bitch i can't tell <laughs> and that's the truth like anybody that sits up there and just says i'm so happy i'm so happy i'm so happy bitch you're lying you're fucking lying you're putting on for the motherfucking gram bitch so they arrive at the hotel for lunch because they can't check into the villa till later on that day Candy announces that Nene will be the host for the escape tour to the girls. Everybody cheers and applauds. Eva tells everyone that Michael has been the only father figure her daughter Marley has known because, you know, her baby daddy is crazy as fuck. Shamia then takes it upon herself to ask her, is he okay with her dating women as well? And everybody was like, oh my God, like <laughs> what? that come from so even say come again and shamia say i heard on the blogs you date you dated missy elliott or something like that and even look at her like no girl bye miss me with that bullshit girl so in her confessional she says where she is beat and her hair is laid to the guys i mean she gave us a look she says that yes she has had a girl on girl experience but wants to know why is shamia being messy because shamia wants a peach god damn it and shamia is thirsty like marlo ass they're gonna do anything and everything to get some camera time so cynthia implies that she wants to get topped off by candy and i was like well bitch that's that's you that's that's what you want to do but i on the other hand i don't want candy to lick my pussy can't no uh uh, uh nope nope she gonna have me walking around sounding like curry go too. nope that's all cynthia i'm still over her fucking wheel <laughs> so candy say y'all know when i didn't fuck cynthia because when i knock cynthia off because she gonna be defending me like she defend will <laughs> And everybody's still laughing. And I'm just looking at kid. I mean, at Cynthia like, bitch, I told you I heard looking like a goddamn dummy. You should have played it like me, but you want to be over there all up in your goddamn feelings behind this light-skinned nigga. So, Eva apologizes to us for things getting out of hand at the party. And Cynthia says, what exactly is the truth? Because from what I understood that night, he does not have a girlfriend. And I'm sitting there like, oh, shit, here we go. Here this bitch go. I told her, don't come on this bullshit on this goddamn trip embarrassing the fuck out of me bitch like we have been through enough when it come to this nigga so even say he might not have a girlfriend he might have a girlfriend when i met him he introduced the woman as his lady cynthia with an attitude baby say well he said he didn't have a girlfriend that day or that night and i'm like cynthia have you fucked this nigga and ain't told me because if you didn't fucking him after i fucked him i don't have a problem with that because he told me he wouldn't fuck your ass he told me he was just fucking me so i need to know if you got a taste of dick because it seems like you got a taste of dick because that's the only thing that can make me in my head understand why you going so goddamn crazy over will bitch and because he must have fucked you better than he fucked me because it had you sitting there acting like a whole goddamn high school student bitch behind this nigga so, Portia say, I was shocked with what I heard that night. That's why I was wondering, should I tell her or not? So, Cynthia say, can I please finish up what I was saying to Eva, please? I just want to get this out because this really is our conversation. I was like, well, damn, bitch. Me and Portia was like, well, girl, ooh, all right. So, I was like, 
Portia girl. Yeah, she fucked him. <laughs> she had to have fucked him. Because that could be the only explanation why Cynthia was going so hard behind Will. He must have fucked her like he fucked me the first night. <laughs> he must have had her screaming and her legs pushed back over her shoulders, bitch. I mean, he must have gave her that good pipe. Because, I mean, he hit me with that light skin death stroke. And I ain't been the same since, bitch. So, Nene say, by any chance do you think he could have told you just a little fib and that these girls are telling the, uh, uh, aren't telling a fib? And Cynthia say, no, I don't believe that he's lying. And I was like, Cynthia, bitch, I'm younger than you. How you gonna sit up here and say that this nigga ain't lying to us? I done told you 50 million times, bitch, if the nigga lied. Okay, he lied. Continue to fuck with him. Just know where y'all stand, bitch. I know the deal between me and Will. I don't trust Will as far as I can throw him, but I'm gonna still fuck him. <laughs> Just do that, bitch. So, Nene said, you believe him after knowing him two months and knowing them. And Cynthia cuts, cuts her off and says, and knowing her five minutes, talking about Eva. And Nene says, well, I'm talking about Portia. And Cynthia said, well, you know, we're still getting to know each other. And I was like, so you have been filming with this girl for like how many years now? About six, seven years. You still don't know Portia. But I'm like, that's the same shit she pulled with Kenya a few years back when back into a corner about their friendship. Cynthia must love to say she don't know bitches <laughs> with her back and stuff against the wall. Like, Cynthia, you fake. You fake, bitch. You fake. So, Nene say, you have been knowing him five minutes, too. And Cynthia say, just because you tell me something don't mean I got to believe it. True, true. I can agree with that. I gave up five on that one. So, Nene say, but when you snap back, ain't it bad? Ain't it being mean? Cynthia says, uh... Cynthia don't think that she was being, you know, snippy and snappy or whatever to the girls. I thought she was. I thought she was kind of being a bitch. Not per se towards Portia, but towards Eva, I thought she was being a little bit bitchy. So, Cynthia says, the reason I'm worried with you, Portia, is because you told me stuff about my ex-husband that may not have been true. And they flash back to the reunions where Portia implied that Peter was fucking his employees on us. So... I was like, okay, Cynthia, I can understand where you're coming from when it comes to Portia because Portia is neither her nor there. Portia is messy as fuck. Portia like to kick up dust and shit. I can understand why you would be weary of anything that Portia has to tell us about our nigga because she's a hater. But when it comes to Eva, Eva didn't have anything to gain or lose by telling us what she told us about Will. I personally think that Cynthia has a problem with Eva because she's jealous because Eva has a relationship with Nene. And I think that she's low-key jealous of Eva because they have the same title on the show. They're both beautiful women who model. And I feel like she's a little bit intimidated by Eva and feeling like Eva may be coming in to take her place on the show because they have the same title the same role and she's a younger version of Cynthia so I think that she's cautious towards Eva because she don't like her friendship with Nene and she don't like the fact that she's a beautiful girl she has that beautiful spot now because Cynthia was the prettiest amongst all the women according to how most people feel um and now Eva is coming in and taking that spot it's just something to marinate on. I ain't jealous of the bitch, though. I mean, I could be around beautiful bitches. I'm beautiful, too, bitch. Shoot, you don't intimidate me. So, where was I at? Cynthia says, when you say someone told me, it's like when I said some someone told you Candy was trying to rape and drug you, and that wasn't the case. And everybody was like, dun, 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 dun. Shit, that got real, bitch. Portia say, hold up, let me get you together real quick. We're talking about this situation with Will. I thought you want I thought you would want to know that you can relate it to your ex-husband all you want, but that situation ended for whatever reason. It ended, and you know what that is. Everybody can tell you something about your man, including Eva. So let me tell you, I won't tell you nothing else. And I was like, well, okay, bitch. <laughs> you ain't hurting my feelings. You might be hurting Cynthia's, but you ain't hurting mine. So the, they flash back to Cynthia asking all the girls, if y'all know anything about my nigga, come tell me. And I was like, well, now, Cynthia, now that they done told you about your nigga, now you don't want to hear about your nigga. Well, which one the fuck is it, Cynthia? Because I don't give a fuck. You ain't got to tell my ass shit. Because once again, I'm still going to fuck him. Ain't nothing deterring me from sucking Will's dick. <laughs> None of you bitches. So, Eva say, there is nothing in me that ever wanted to hurt you or him. Cynthia accepts her apology and her words. And after that, we all go sightseeing. 
Portia is mad boots, baby, when we get on the bus. She's still in her feelings behind her argument with her and Cynthia. I'm just sitting there laughing at everybody because I'm enjoying myself. This is my first time out the motherfucking country, bitch. So they talk about licking balls and shit. And Cynthia, amateur ass, amateur night at the Apollo ass, say she ain't, she don't do that. And I was like, see, that's why we'll fucking meet. Because <laughs> you over there dropping the ball, bitch. Well, I got them in my mouth. Uh... <laughs> My mama watches my review. I know my mama be like, who in the fuck have I raised? Hey, mama. Hey, girl. That's how you got me. Sucking on my daddy balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, the girls arrive at the villa. And there's flamingo dancers. They're awaiting us. Awaiting our arrival. We all excited to go into the villa, bitch. But it ain't no villa, bitch. This is motherfucking town home. <laughs> townhouse in the project it looked like i was staying at somebody airbnb where i'm paying them like 300 dollars a night i was like where the fuck am cynthia bitch what the fuck girl where the fuck am? i'm like they finally give us a good trip then they sit, sit us in the motherfucking projects bitch we up here got dial soap joy dishwashing liquid for the bubble bath bitch we over here in the goddamn dumps bitch the place wasn't horrible but it wasn't lavish like the other girls get once again they had to play us because we the black girls so everybody is pissed off by the accommodations the towels is dry and shit the comforters like they got it from walmart the little bed in the bag <laughs> it's like bullshit so, Candy tells Nene that she claimed the room upstairs at the patio and living room, and Nene is mad. Nene talks Cynthia into asking Kenya, I mean, Kenya, Candy to trade rooms with her. So, they all have a meeting in the living room, and I'm just sitting there, bitch, because I'm hungry, I'm ready to eat, I'm fat, I'm tired, I've been on this plane all day, bitch, I'm disgusted, I want to take a bath. I ain't got time for to be sitting up here arguing about who's going to be in what room. So, she says that her and Cynthia should be upstairs with the more mature girls. Now, this is what Nene said. She called herself mature, bitch. Candy says she's not falling for it and she's not changing her room. She like Rosa Parks, bitch. She ain't the fuck moving. Candy brings up that anytime they mention Nene's age, she insists that she's still young and vibrant and she ain't old, this, this, and that. Marlo says, you know, are y'all, are they moving or is Candy going to punk you and say she ain't moving? I'm looking at Marlo like, girl, stop it. You, you too old to be talking about somebody punking somebody. Everybody in here damn near 40 or over 40, bitch. What the fuck are you talking about some punking? Shut up, Marlo, trying to get her time. Just shut the fuck up. So Candy say, bye, Marlo, because ain't, it ain't even no punking situation. Nene lets it go, and they all go into changes to their nightwear. Shamia decides to put on some pink toddler stripper S don't go chasing waterfalls please look to the rivers and the lakes that you use to i don't know what the fuck that bitch had on i need her to send it back immediately so marlo tells cynthia that if anybody brings up the wheel situation again for her to handle it gracefully because she was offensive and she is too pretty for that and i was just sitting there like girl i tried to tell your ass but you don't want to listen to me but whatever so cynthia doesn't think again that she was being defensive and i'm pretty sure after she saw tonight's episode she felt like a cold and complete utter fool because i'm over here fucking wheel wheel over there in my bed as i'm doing this motherfucking review he ain't with that bitch tonight he was me so Nene says that, you know, she was correct with what she said about Portia because Portia has talked about Peter in the past. And I agree with that. Portia tells Shamia that how Cynthia treated her hurt her feelings. And I was like, mm, just because y'all had a cute moment when y'all was in San Francisco don't mean that y'all just BFF. You and Cynthia have had a lot of run-ins in the past with the fight, with you saying shit about that girl husband. Why would she honestly believe anything that you have to say, Portia? You have to understand that you have really put yourself in a predicament when it comes to this group of women. Um, so I feel like what I do under, I do feel like Portia was coming from a genuine place. I don't feel like she was trying to be malicious. I do believe what she said about Will, but she has to understand how people look at her now. Um, Nene tells Marlo and Cynthia that she was offended by Candy when she brought up the whole age thing. Nene says, it kind of made me want to check her ass. We look the same. Nene, bitch, where? You and Candy don't look the same age, sis. You delusional. You look your age. You look great for your age, but Candy looks younger than you. You're older than her. You're older than everyone. I need you to accept the fact, bitch, that you are a middle-aged woman. It's okay. It's all right. You look great for your age, sis. 
But all the, the, the wigs and the lace fronts and the blonde and the young outfits, bitch, ain't going to deter from the fact that you 50-something years old, sis. Have several. So, um, where was I at? She say, y'all bitches is fat. Take your clothes off and let me take mine off. Nobody need nope. Nobody needs for you to take your clothes off, Nene. Don't nobody need to see all the liposuction, the pulling and tucking, and the, the, the bending and the twisting and the sewing that you had done on that body. Nobody needs to see it, sis. I need for you to just get out of the the the, the goddamn Crazyville, USA that you living in, the lose the land that you living in, bitch. Greg might like what he see, but we we won't like it. We we just won't. So. I'm just sitting up there looking at this scene like this is how you talk about someone that gives you an opportunity of the lifetime to go on tour and make an extreme amount of money and to put your so-called comedy on uh, out there for the world to see. Because I've seen bits and pieces of Nene's look comedy that she does. She's not funny at all. She's not funny at all. And I was like, see, God knew what he was doing. God made sure that Nene was not going to reap the benefits of Candy's blessing by going on tour. That's why when she had that run in at her comedy show a few weeks later, where she ended up telling a heckler to that she hoped that that person get raped by an Uber driver. She fucked up. God made sure that shit happened because he did not want her cringing on Candy's fucking blessing because Nene does not have a pure heart. Yeah, her and Candy have squashed their so-called beef, but she still don't low-key see it for her because it was it was too easy for her to go back on there. I checked that bitch and this, 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 and that. Her heart ain't genuine all the way. Mm -mm. Um, and she need to watch what comes out of her mouth. This is a lesson for anybody watching what happened with Nene tonight with the Candy situation. Watch what come out your mouth because it'll come back to bite your ass. So Marlo says, Candy seems like she got a beef with me. She can't take anything that come out of my mouth. And I was like, girl, ain't nobody tripping off you. You want it to be a problem. So Sheree goes in the room with Portia and Shamia. She says that Kim would not have stayed there. And so they decide to call her because, you know, she just couldn't wait to get her massa on the phone. So they tell her that Kenya isn't there, and Sheree tells her that Nene says she can't be there without her husband. Portia then goes on to say something, but then says, you know what, never mind, this sense of it. Everybody's like, girl, just say it, say it, say it, say it. So she's like, you know, no, I'm just going to say, you know, I didn't know that you were a cancer survivor because, you know, I've had people in my family that have survived from cancer too. Portia, you knew exactly what the fuck you were doing. You were kicking up dust, and you was you knew exactly what you were saying when you said that to Kim. But okay, let's pretend like you didn't. So... Kim starts immediately going off. Sheree repeats what Nene said about her on the bus, about all her sicknesses, like she wasn't at the reunion when she said that she had fucking cancer. I'm looking at the screen like, really, Sheree? You gonna act like you wasn't sitting there on the motherfucking couch when this bitch lied and said that she had fucking cancer, bitch, and that was the reason why she wore weeds? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Sheree? Are you that goddamn desperate and hard up for money that you are just willing to do any and anything and everything for a fucking buck? You willing to run in behind a bitch like Kim? You look really stupid. You look like an Uncle Tom. Like, how can you stand behind some racist, ignorant-ass, lying-ass bitch like this? You make black people look really bad. She's making herself look really bad. And I don't like Sheree now. Like, I have 100% after this episode washed my hands of Sheree. She's a fucking Uncle Tom, and I cannot deal with her. So... Kim starts to go off and call Nene trash and talks about her rental Royce and the fact that she got roaches in her house. And then Kim says, let me find a video, stand by and hangs up. And they just sitting there like, ooh, bitch. And I was like, all you hoes is just fucking despicable. Marlo brings a uh, Kim wig to the table for dinner and a tiara to represent Kim and Kenya. <laughs> the shit was funny, low key. Nene makes Portia and Marlo prepare drinks for the ladies. Portia tells Candy that Nene's feelings were hurt by her. They go back and forth, but I guess they somewhat squashed whatever their little beef was. They say, let's bless the food. And Shamia says, how about one of the elders? And Nene goes off and tells her not to do that because she goes from zero to 100 real quick. And I'm like, bitch, get, go, go. Go to 1,000 real quick, bitch. Who the fuck you think you checking, bitch? Because you bad because you old. Bitch, you old. Get over it. Be happy that God blessed you to live this all, as long as you fucking have. Girl, sit your retarded looking ugly ass down somewhere, Nene. Like, girl, ugh, with your all the pores and shit in your face. Ugh, shut up. Just stop it. Oh, Jesus. So Marlo 
says to Candy, since I said that you were so dry, you've been on to me. You're not welcoming. Candy said, you've been running your mouth all day. I don't care if she thinks I'm dry or not. Marlo says, it's your tone. Everybody, you know, phone then so I was buzzing and ringing. And Kim sent all the girls a text from Kim. For, I mean, Kim sent all the girls a text going in on Nene and the video, it shows them the video of Brielle in her bathroom with the fucking water bugs or whatever the fuck they was, but they were not fucking roaches. Portia uh, reads the text out loud where she talks about her having roaches and having a rental royce. Kim remind, Candy reminds us that when Kim came to her house years ago, she said that Candy lived in the hood. Kim is one of them bitches that don't want to see nobody else doing better than her. She's jealous of Candy and she is jealous of Nene and Candy's success. She want to down anything anybody else does that is not aligned with her and that is not, you know, her so-called friend at the moment. She wants to diss them and make them less than her she wants to be the bitch with everything and she does not have everything she's mad because when the show started kim was up here per se because she had you know uncle papa or whatever uncle daddy or whatever that nigga was you know uh lavishing her and giving her this lifestyle and nene didn't have much season one let's keep it 100 nene and greg didn't have much but over the years nene became the head bitch in charge and became one of the most highest paid real housewives in all of the franchises and she feels some type of way about all of nene's success i have a lot of problems with nene but i'm never going to take away the fact that woman has worked hard over the last 10 years to get where the fuck she's at with her doing all these television shows with her comedy stuff <clears throat> with Real, Real Housewives of Atlanta, with Fashion Police. This girl has done a lot, and you cannot take away all her hard work. So talk about her all you want. Kim is just mad, and Kim is fucking jealous. Anybody that sits up there and tries to get receipts on you for when y'all fall out so they can have something to say about you was never your friend, always wished you ill, and always had ill intentions towards you from the jump. Kim is a nasty, despicable person, and I feel like what she did on this season and with Kenya and Nene was in comparison to what she, uh, to what Phaedra did last year to Candy. She just, she should not come back next season. I feel like she's lying. I feel like she's the one to keep on putting out these stories that Kenya has been fired. Kenya ain't been fired by no goddamn Bravo because last week she just did promotion. For Bravo, it was Kenya, um, Giselle, Erica Jane, Cynthia, all of them just did promotion for Bravo with Andy Cohen. If she was fired, they would not continue to use her to promote anything for Bravo. I feel like Kim is the one that's putting out these goddamn fake-ass stories to the blogs and shit. Kim is just horrible. Kim is just, just disgusting. She is just a nasty, vile-ass bitch. And Croy, that bitch gonna ruin your motherfucking life, bitch. You better make good with your family while you can so, where was I at? Cynthia wants to know how Kim even knew about the conversation that they had earlier. Sheree admits that she told her. And at this point, Nene, this is when you should have cussed Sheree ass the fuck out. I don't know why ain't nobody ever cussed Sheree out by going back and telling bitches shit while she just be sitting there. Like, y'all better start cussing Sheree ass the fuck out with her non not having shit ass. Ugh. So, in my opinion, Sheree and Portia should have got cussed the fuck out because Portia, bitch, your ass ain't learned shit from being messy last season. You would think that you would be trying to get in the good in the ladies' graces by, you know, changing and showing that you're not being messy, but her you still is being messy as fuck. Fuck Sheree, fuck Portia, fuck Kim, fuck all them hoes. So Nene say, fuck Kim. Can none of y'all bitches step in my house and say shit about my uh, house? Everything is brand new with the tag still on it. Kim then sends a pic of Nene's car in a handicapped spot. Like, what the fuck is that? What? Ooh, her car was parked in a handicapped space. Ooh, what does that prove? Nothing. What you trying to say? She illegally parked somewhere? That's all you got? You sound stupid, Kim. Stupid and pressed as fuck. So, um, Nene reminds us that Kim said that she didn't even see her at the mall, which she did lie and say. Nene, like, you know, I was with a handicapped person. My husband got a handicapped sticker. She even put it out there on social media when all this shit was going down. She showed the handicapped stickers and shit. Sheree says, I think she was just mad about what you said about her health. Nene um, then stands behind what she said about Kim. Kim says, um, she then says that Kim got what she is by spreading her legs to married men and women. And it was the 100% motherfucking truth. All tea, bitch, no motherfucking sugar. 
Um, so that was my review tonight of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. I give tonight's episode an A motherfucking plus, bitch. I can't wait for next week's episode. Once again, if we had audio issues, I apologize if the audio got out of sync or anything while filming this. But tonight's episode was lit. Let me know what y'all thought down below in the comment section about Cynthia and Will. What did you think about Sheree running and telling Kim about what Nene said about her on the bus? What do you think about what Nene said about Candy? What do you feel about Mar Marlo trying to start shit with Candy? Tonight episode is all over the place. Make sure to thumbs up this video. Subscribe to my channel if you have not. Um, yeah, tonight's episode was lit. I will be doing a Married to Medicine review tonight, so be on the lookout for that to drop as well. Also, my latest novel, Such a Fucking Lady, is out right now. You can download it on Kindle, Nook, or buy it in paperback. All the, uh, all of the links are down below. And also, my first teen novel that I wrote with my son, Smells Like Teen Spirit Volume 1, Eris. You can download it for free, for free, until Thursday. That link will be down below in the description box. It's, it, blah, 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 blah. Dis description box as well if you would like to read it for free. Get it for free. Um, thank you all for watching this review. Love you so much. Bye.